Yo, what's up everybody? It is your boy, Brandon. I am glad to bring you another awesome video. So today, I finally got a little bit of sunshine outside. So why not go ahead and throw out a video to you guys? So me and Tamika decided to go out and test the EOS R and the 50 millimeter 1.2 RF lens versus the A7 III and the Sigma 50 millimeter 1.4 Sigma art lens. Now, you know, this is my favorite combo. I use it in my studio. A lot of things that you see um, with my studio shots come from the 50 millimeter 1.4 Sigma. So now this is the first time I've ever did this on any video ever. All of the pictures that you are going to see from the EOS R and the A7 III are straight out of camera. No editing whatsoever. You're more than welcome to zoom in and see if you see any type of, you know, dodge and burn and frequency separation and all that. Every camera came, every picture came straight out of camera, all right? First time I ever done this and put my work out there, uh, but I had Tamika do go really, really good on her makeup because I said, hey, you know, the flaws, whatever, whatever the case may be, they're going to come out. I want to do a very fair comparison, no editing, no anything to both of these images. So both of these cameras were shot at their basic profiles, basic standard profiles, no sat added saturation, no added sharpness, no nothing. They are both picture profile off, picture profile off, standard across the board. I use continuous auto focus for both of them just to see how they would track Tamika when she was standing and moving and everything. So both of them are both shot in continuous autofocus. Um, they were both shot at ISO 100 and they were both shot at 1.4. Even though this is a 1.2, I did stop it down to 1.4 um, just so they can be even. I tried to match the shutter speeds on both cameras for every shot. I think we started out at 8,000th of a second and then we worked down from there. So, without further ado, I'm going to get into the video, um, and then again, at the end, I'm going to do a, a video test of both cameras side by side so you can see how they held up in the video test. All right, let's get to the video. Was mine, nothing to deny. Who started all the guy? Are oh, you wasting my time? All these crazy fears that ends with bloody tears. Oh, baby, we keep prepping long nights. Rock your body whole life. Don't bother the world side. Twerk it like a Vegas stripper, dollar money stage. My billions in the cage. Fight, fuck their thoughts and get high and get high. It's 
your life So don't you bother the worst knife We are all the same You don't have to explain, no Just stay in your lane So I'm gonna break in here real quick. Now we are going to do a video test for both cameras. Now, before you ask, both cameras were set up the same exact way. They are standard profiles straight out of camera, just like if you would press the, the record button on each one, they are both set up the same exact way. The A7 III has the continuous autofocus on, um, and I th it's set on uh, wide, and the EOS R is, has servo AF on. Um, and they are both set on um, set on wide with eye autofocus on, um, just to see how they track you know their subjects with face detection, eye autofocus coming back and forward. So let's get to that and tell me what you guys think about the first time you're going to see the tracking with the updated EOS R versus the A7 III. All right, guys. So here we go. This is the Canon EOS R versus the Sony A7 III in movie mode. Canon's dual pixel autofocus legendary system versus Sony's amazing continuous blistering fast autofocus system. So let's see how they fare with each other and how they keep up. Okay, so as you can see in this first test, I had to make a jump out of frame and then back into frame. As you can see, the Sony picks up very well while the Canon still struggles to grab focus. All right, so for this next test, we're gonna have to make a dug down out of frame, and then she's gonna jump back up into frame. We're gonna see how they pick up focus. Now, as you can see, the Sony racks focus so super fast while the Canon is still struggling to actually pick up focus on Tamika. I actually had to hold the shutter button down to pick up focus on her because it just would not pick up focus once your model comes back into the frame. It's very disappointing. 
Now as you see Tamika go forward into the camera and then she's going to back up away from the camera. Both cameras do a very good job with keeping focus on the subject and that's one thing about both of these cameras even the Canon when you're locked on to a subject it really locks on and it won't let go um, you will see it kind of drop focus on both cameras here for just a split second but it picks back up very well as she goes away from the sub uh, away from the camera and then back to the camera Now for this next one, here's one of those tests again where Tamika is going to go slightly out of frame and come back in the frame. And as you can see, that Canon just drops that focus so easily. As soon as your model disappears out of frame, it has a really hard time keeping up and getting your model back into focus. I had to, again, hold the shutter button to grab focus on her again when she disappeared out of frame. While the Sony continues to do such a superior drop in focus and even when your model out of the frame and grabbing focus immediately on her when she comes back into frame. So this one goes to Sony again. Okay, so for this next text, you're going to see Tamika just do a few quick spins here, and I want to see how each one goes from face detection to eye autofocus and how they both pick up focus um, once her face is turned away. And um, actually, both of them did a really, really good job in keeping focus, so this one goes to uh, both cameras. Okay, for this next text, we're going to play with objects, so I'm going to have Tamika pick up some leaves and put them out in front of her face, and then she's going to drop them back down to see how it racks focus back to her. Now, the Canon is already at a disadvantage because as soon again as she went out of frame it dropped focus um, and did not pick up on her when she came back in frame so she's going to hold out the leaves and then she's going to put them down um, as you can see the Sony is still just a little bit faster picking up that focus and once it locks on it locks on while Canon is still struggling to grab focus on Tamika so again I have to half press the shutter in order to grab focus on Tamika again with the Canon and now we're going to do a series of tests where she's going to hold the leaves out in front of her and then she's going to drop them down so you guys can check out the results. Alright guys, and there you have it. It just looks like the Sony is just doing an extremely better job than the EOS R. Picking up focus, racking focus, grabbing your subject in and out of frame. It's just doing an amazing job, so I hope this helps. Whew! Alright guys, so I hope you enjoyed that video. So let's do a quick recap, alright? I'm not going to... You take it for what it's worth. I'm going to tell you my personal opinion. Now, I am Sony. It, it, it's awesome to add another camera to your lineup. Everybody probably who has a professional camera shoots more than one camera manufacturer. I chose to go with the EOS R because they are doing some amazing things. I've shot Canon for years, so getting the EOS R and going through the menu system, because I had the 5D Mark IV, it was like riding a bike. It was very, very easy. I already knew where to set everything up yet, so I'm not talking from somebody who's never used this camera system um, or the menu system before. I used it for over four years. 5D Mark IV is very, very similar. So I can tell you from actual experience, from coming from the 5D Mark IV to the EOS R, that it, it is amazing and it was very, very easy to do. Second thing is, let's talk about the photos. I'm going to tell you hands down, and I am sorry for saying this, as you guys will see from the pictures, or as you saw, the EOS R looks cleaner and they look better straight out of camera versus the a7 III. The a7 III kind of gave you this kind of orange, you know, type of magenta type look to the pictures. Um, and again, that's on standard profile. It's not set on anything else. That's just how the image, they look a little bit more warmer um, coming straight out of camera. The EOS R, I felt, looked so much more natural, cleaner. The colors were just amazingly popping. Let's talk about video. I am, Canon still has some work to do with the EOS R as far as video tracking and their eye out of focus and tracking. The A7 III blew the EOS R out of the water, hands down, when it came to tracking. As you can see in that video, I had Tamika going up, down, left, right, forward, back, 
and the EOS R would drop focus. If you went out of frame and came back in, it was really hard for the EOS R to pick up focus. The A7 III, as soon as she came back in frame, the A7 III was on it, all right? And they, like I said, this is set up to continuous and this is set up to servo. So just, just blatant, it had trouble focusing. I, I, I appreciate what they did with the update to the EOS R and the eye autofocus, but it still has a ways to go when you mess with the Sony system. Hands down, it still has a ways to go. Um, it did not track, it kind of tracked as far as the um, as the A7 III or the Sony system when, you're, when you had your subject in focus and they were moving backwards. If you, if the, once the EOS R locks on, it locks on, all right? As long as you keep that one subject right there, it will lock onto that subject and won't let it go. That is one of the things where it is up there or on par or matching the Sony system. However, when the subject moves out of frame or your subject moves slightly, I even had to make a turning and it was okay. As long as it was already locked on, it was okay. But once she moves out of frame, comes back in, does anything where it drops focus, it had a hard time picking back up focus. The Sony system was just on point. It was on point. So you guys take it for what it's worth. Now, before you ask about the A7R4, I did not put this against the A7R4. I will probably do it in a later video because I did not think having a 61 megapixel um, camera would have been fair um, going up against a 30 megapixel and a 24 megapixel camera. I just didn't. So I knew, I kind of figured that the images will probably be much sharper, much cleaner out of the a7 IV, but everybody wants to see it. So the next video that you guys are gonna see in another week or so, we're gonna put the EOS R 50 millimeter 1.2 versus the a7 R4 uh, with the Sigma 50 millimeter 1.4 and we will see how the images look straight out of camera No editing no nothing. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video This is probably the fairest that I've ever seen the EOS R go up against the a7 III because nothing was edited out I kept everything in here. So I didn't edit any pictures or any video So I hope you guys I hope this helps you and you guys can really draw your own conclusions from it But until next time peace